Hello Star Trek Fleet Commanders, how are we doing today? In today's video, I want to talk to you a little bit about solo armadas. Some of the crews I found helpful and more, I guess specifically, why I have chosen the crews that I have. So you can try and tailor it to the crews that you have. Um, it's, it's difficult to say, oh, I have these crews, look, this works for me. But if you understand why I choose it, then hopefully you can go through your crews who are going to be probably different than mine or at least different tiers and uh, see which ones will work the best for you. And you'll have the kind of understanding of why in order to be able to craft that for yourself. So today I'm going to be doing um, some, some armadas in... This system right here is level 57 system in Bajoran, or more specifically, uh, I guess it's Bajoran space or Jem'Hadar space. Anyways, the Jem'Hadar armadas. So let's look at my cruise real quick and we'll talk about it. And before we get into that, if you wouldn't mind, if you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Really helps us out. Helps me grow this channel. Hit that like and subscribe button to continue to see my uh, future content come up as it is available. So now let's look at my ships. And my ships will be different, but they are some examples of crews that I like to use. So in this first one, I have Dax. Not everyone has Dax, but I think she's a fantastic officer for solo armadas with Miles and Cisco. Let me talk to you about why real quick. So Dax's captain's ability increases shield piercing, armor piercing, and accuracy by 1,225%. And so that is because of the synergy she has with Miles and Cisco, and she doesn't get perfect synergy with miles but i like that miles increases your has a chance to increase your shots per round he is max for me or he's a max tier and cisco is also max so he's going to increase the critical hit chance by 12 percent every round so what i like here oh and i guess we'll look at dax's officer ability so i've tried to put as much health as i can below dex with my officers in the below deck slots to increase this ability to, to, to make her more effective, as well as this ability to make this more effective. So what we're going to look at as we look at the different crew setups, what I always try to have in my solo armada crews is one, I try to make sure that each ship, if possible, has some type of critical officer. Um, secondly, I try to make sure that there's some type of piercing officer. In this case, it's Dax, where you are getting through more of their initial defenses, their mitigation, so that more will go to the shields and hence more gets to the hull. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at some battle reports and some quick calculations for those who haven't seen this in my previous videos or in other videos. Um, it really has a big impact on what gets to the hull. Okay, so that's this crew. I put it on my strongest ship. Now, some of you may ask as we, we look in things, why don't I put it on my Defiant, which is tier 10 right now. We'll look into that in a second. I need to do some more testing. It's getting strong enough and hitting hard enough that it's kind of comparable with the normal shots, not the big shots of the Enterprise, but I still feel like the Enterprise is the biggest hitting ship that I currently have. All right. Next, let's look at the Talios. Why do I use the Talios? Because it's at my tier, at my level, it's got gobs of health compared to my other ships. So I'm using five, six Lorca. I need to put Lorca somewhere for hull breach. He has a chance at the beginning of each round to deal hull breach. And for those who don't know, hull breach is fantastic in that it magnifies your critical hit damage for all of your ships, not just the one that causes the hull breach. So that's fantastic. Okay. Um, let's see, weaponry. So this is Captain Maneuver for 5 of 11. So 5 of 11 is going to increase the mitigation of your ship by the health of your officers on deck, as well as increasing the loot drops from hostiles, from armadas. It counts for both. Okay. And then... <clears throat> Excuse me. And then lastly, we have the officer ability for 6 of 11. 
and his is the piercing. So on this ship, unfortunately, I don't have a critical officer. Um, not quite able to kind of figure that out with this ship right here. Okay, so the next ship, let's look at that together. <clears throat> so with this one, we've got Chakotay, and I know not everyone has Chakotay. I'll show you another crew example here that I don't have my current armada set up that you can consider. But once again, we're just giving you examples here, so things you can think about. So Chakotay, as the captain, because he has max energy, or he has energy from both a Janeway and the Doctor, he's going to increase the shot. So I really like that. The Defiant does hit pretty hard at this tier um dang ship hearts keep getting in the way uh i really wish i could tear this up so much more and you know even get it to max uh eventually but those ship parts are a pain to get okay so his officer ability here is the critical officer right so increases your critical hit chance of your ship by eight percent for two rounds each time you score a hit so we're going to be scoring a hit versus armadas so we're going to be getting criticals from him Janeway as her officer ability. She's got this cascade damage, uh, isolytic damage, okay? Um, significant, really increases your damage. And then the doctor, based upon the health of your officers, he's gonna increase your mitigation. So those are the three I'm gonna use in the Armada that we're gonna launch here in a second. Um, let's see here. So this is another setup that I have used in the past. I don't currently use, but it works pretty good. If you have data, he's a great captain with this ability right here, where he increases the critical hit chance by 20%. That's just a flat amount. So on my ship, critical chance 22%. Increase it by 20%. You know, you're in the 40% range. That's not bad. That's a pretty good chance to do your criticals, okay? Beverly, as officer ability, she's going to increase your own mitigation, so less, hopefully less damage will be getting to your hull. And then Bashir, he is also increasing critical hit chance by a certain percentage. So you've got 20% for him, you've got 20% for data, that's 20, 20 is 40, plus that 62% chance on this ship of doing damage. Um, <clears throat> Bashir is a little bit harder to source right now. Um, I think the only, usually the only way you can get him is through incursions. I think there's there's that event there. Was it spends ship XP? I think it is. Um, and I think they occasionally have had him in either the flash pass between arcs or um, like likes the syndicate XP. They have a spend event each month for that. So if you don't have him, he's a great officer. Uh, let's hop in and look for those who don't know his captain's maneuver Increase critical hit damage by 50% so he can be a pretty good Captain the one thing that we don't see here. Oh I forgot no data does have that sorry. It's been a while since I've used him So he's gonna increase the piercing so you've got piercing you've got critical hit chance this is actually a really decent crew setup here. And I threw these officers down here just for stats. So no particular reason why I have the blow deck officers there, by the way. So since I am punching up, I did want to give an example here. What I've usually done, and I probably... Let's go ahead while we're talking here. I am going to send my Titan just to help give us a little bit more oomph here. So part of the problem is these, since I'm punching up, it armadas hit quite a bit harder uh, for my ships. I should be able to get my uh, G5 uncommon, not keeping up with the G6s at all, <laughs> but I should be able to get my G5 uncommon here shortly. So what... What I'm going to do, is because I'm punching up, it's going to be a little bit harder. I'm going to head and start my buffs now because I know I'm going to put a buff on the Defiant just because it's a weaker ship and I want it to have um, a little bit more shields and damage and defenses and so forth to last the battle. So I'm going to start that timer as the Titan here has about a minute that it is away. 
And what I'm going to do is I know that these armadas have a minute and a half timers on them, 90 seconds. So I'm going to wait until the cooldown timer gets down to about a minute 20. And then I'm going to start my second buff on my Enterprise. Okay, there we go. So, actually, I took take that back. I can't start the second buff. Sorry, I spoke incorrectly there. So what I'm going to do is start the Armada. And we'll get my ships joined. And I don't know how many of you knew this or not, but you can actually, if you go to the system, they're going to have different amounts of credits. So this one has 1 million, 1.04 million, 1 million. The one I picked had slightly more. I'll zoom in so we can more easily select it. You see it's got 1.16 million. For those who don't know, the Defiance ability helps get these edicts a lot easier. I've got a ton of them now. Um, so not as beneficial necessarily just for the edicts, but okay. So now that Titan's here, we're just going to do the fortification. And then as soon as this timer runs out, I will add that buff to the enterprise and we'll see how we do. So solar armadas do take some testing. Um, if I were you and you're just starting out, I would just go to the one of the beginning systems, find an armada and see what you can do. And then you just kind of work your way up and you'll get to a point where you try a system and you get completely obliterated and you're like, okay, let's go back to the drawing board on that one. But it's fun to kind of test yourselves and see how high up you can go. And if I didn't totally screw things up while I was talking there, not bad. See, we have plenty to be able to do, plenty of hole left to do another one. And that's a key too, I think, that you try and time it so that you can take advantage of a couple of your buffs, even, you know, to extend things out, even if that means that uh, I'm double uh, buffing with the um, Cerritos right off the bat. Um, I was also going to say, that's right. So when you're, these, these solos open up a tier at level 35. And so the idea that Scopely has is that, well, if you're a, a 35, then you should have the 34 ship at least teared up a little bit. So that means the three G3 Epic, if you don't have that, by the time you get to level 35, you really need to. Um, and I would tear that up to probably tier four, maybe tier five at least before you are really trying these. Probably tier five or six, to be honest, um, just to get that extra umph. And the more epic ships you have, the better, obviously. But um, I would definitely start there before you um, start doing these armadas. So in a nutshell, that's really the the crews that, that i would recommend in, in in recap what you want to do just make sure you have a whole breach officer like Lorca or gorkon who can trigger that whole breach Lorca i think works better uh but not everyone has Lorca and gorkon gorkon is easier to source you want to make sure you have piercing and hopefully a critical officer on each one of your ships um it will make a huge difference as you're doing these armadas um and and uh Hopefully that will give you a good starting point or maybe give you some tips on crews um, that I have used. And, and once again, just to emphasize, I really don't want you just necessarily to just use my crews. If you have them, that's great. Um, go with that to start off with. But really try to imply the logic here. You want hull breach. You want a critical officer on each ship if possible. Um, you want piercing officers to do more damage to the armada's hull. Plus, you also, if you can have it, is to have mitigation officer on your own ship to reduce your own ship's damage that's incoming. So, um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, 
hopefully this helps and hopefully it gets you in a good place where you can look at some things. I was going to look at the, the math, but I think we'll forego that just because it can be, be a little boring to some people. But you can go in and you can go to your battle logs and you can say, okay, if I take how much um, damage was mitigated divided by my actual damage dealt, that can give you a number. And the more damage you can get past that initial mitigation, the more damage you can do to the hull and the quicker the battle will end and the bigger targets you'll be able to take on. So anyways, leave your comments below. Any questions you have, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, feel free to join the Discord for our monthly giveaways and uh, kind of easier communication with me. We just gave away our first monthly battle pass this month um, and plan to do that each month going forward. So um, live long and prosper and we'll talk to you next time.